detect, reduce and correct deficiencies in lab internal analytical process prior to the release of patient's results thus improving the uh, quality of results reported by the uh, laboratory. Now uh, quality uh, can be assured at three stages uh, namely pre-analytical stage, analytical stage and post-analytical stage. In pre-analytical stage it starts from test selection, specimen collection onwards. Analytical stage is the core uh, processing of the sample and it includes essentially two parts that is the internal quality control and external quality assurance which I will be dealing with in detail. Um, post analytical stage uh, involves timely dispatch of the informative report. QC or quality control, quality assurance. Quality assurance uh, is a broader term that involves uh, QC in it. Uh, it is the sum total of laboratories activities aimed at achieving the required standard of analysis. Quality assurance program along with the quality control program also involves staff training, administrative procedures, management structures, etc. Accreditation bodies judge a, a laboratory on the basis of their quality assurance program. Now this is a flowchart which shows uh, the complete events happening in the laboratory. The, uh, it starts from specimen collection to the transit of the report to the clinician. Uh, the first three stages that is specimen collection, specimen transit and the test uh, recorded are uh, involved in the pre-analytical control. Here uh, factors such as standard conditions in which the specimen is collected, uh, posture in which the uh, specimen is collected, tonic weight and uh, anticoagulant in which the uh, specimen is collected affect the, uh, the system of pre-analytical control. Then comes the analytic process where uh, the selected methods, instrument calibration and equipment check. These three factors affect the analytical process. Uh, later on the significance uh, of the report and the reference values are given and the report is handed over to the clinician. Uh, in, order to, uh, in order to understand um, in, uh, quality control, we should understand these definitions first. Uh, specificity, uh, it, uh, specificity of a test uh, is set, uh, the test is said to be specific if it measures only the analyte of interest. Uh, the, sp uh, the test is said to be accurate if uh, there is closeness of agreement between the true value and the observed value. Uh, which means in simple words that how correct of a result the test is giving. That is called as accuracy. Then uh, precision is the precision is the closeness of uh, the uh, closeness of the values that uh, in a serial uh, Serial testing of the same specimen of the patient. That means how many times you get the same value uh, on the test. Now this is a uh, diagram sh uh, showing a better picture of accuracy and precision. In this you see uh, this is the bullseye method. Here the dots, black dots are scattered far away in the first picture. That shows that uh, the test has low accuracy because it is not hitting the target and low precision because they are scattered away. Uh, the second uh, second picture shows uh, low accuracy, high precision because the dots are crowded together but it, they do not hit the target. That means that they are of uh, high precision but low accuracy. The third picture shows high accuracy but low precision meaning they are hitting the target but they are scattered, to, uh, scattered away in the target itself. And the final picture shows high accuracy and high precision. Quality management at the pre-analytical phase. Uh, requisition form when the sample is uh, collected at that time there is a requisition form along with all necessary information regarding patient's identification and uh, relevant clinical information. It is a properly labeled sample of the patient which, sh which should have been collected. The laboratory shall have a documented procedure for monitoring the transportation of samples to ensure that they are transported within a specific time frame appropriate to the nature of the requested examination and uh, they should also be transported within a specific temperature uh, interval in uh, for ensuring the integrity of the sample. Now there are various criteria uh, depending on which we can reject the sample. First and the foremost is a sample quality is not sufficient. Now here is a diagram that shows in uh, D uh, the sample obtained is not uh, the sufficient quality of the sample, uh, quantity of the sample is not obtained. Secondly, it shows uh, leakage, leakage of the sample. If the container of the uh, sample is soiled with blood, 
it shows leakage of the sample and we can reject the sample there and then uh, when the sample is partially or fully clotted we cannot run it on the hemat hematolyzer that is why uh, we can uh, reject it then uh, when the sample is collected in the wrong anticoagulant it can be rejected and if the sample is mislabeled then there will be problems in reporting uh, that sample also has to be um, rejected now the core of the topic internal quality control procedures internal quality control monitors the performance of the test procedures in the laboratory on a daily or a batch to batch basis it includes measurements on specially prepared control materials uh, repeated measurements on patients specimens and statistical analysis of patients data it ensures that continual validation of reliability of the results are produced by the laboratory before the reports are released now the first step first thing uh, which we should do after we go into the laboratory is start up and background check what is background check uh, in that we have to run uh, the machine blank when you run the machine blank all the values should be obtained 0 0 if it is not uh, if it is not there then there is some problem with the uh, uh, machine and uh, it is not in control we, uh, we shall say then uh, if required if we can take uh, necessary actions over there then that is done once we uh, run uh, three multi level controls that is uh, a low level control a normal level control and a high level control three samples are run uh, when these samples are run uh, we have to monitor these samples on the lj chart apply the westgard's interpretation monitor the coefficient of variation if required we have to take necessary action Then, uh, then the next QC monitoring uh, using retained sample. <clears throat> when uh, periodically these samples have to be checked till the shutdown of the machine. And uh, at the end, when the machine is shut down, QC monitoring has to be done using a retained sample. What is a control material? It is a solution analyzed solely for the purpose of QC and not for calibration. it should be simple to use now ideal uh, control material should have the same matrix as that of the patient's specimen including the viscosity turbidity and composition and color um liquid controls are more convenient uh, than lyophilized controls because they do not have to be reconstituted hence uh, minimize the pipetting errors it should be stable for long periods of time uh, controls with shorter sh uh, shelf life necessitate verification and unnecessary work is improved uh, increased QC material should cover the measuring range uh, of the analyte both in its normal and its pathological ranges now what are control charts these were first applied in clinical chemistry by levy and jennings hence the name levy and jennings chart that is lj chart it is a use uh, it is a means to monitor laboratory performance using control materials and they are now uh, used in hematology widely Uh, these are obtained on the automated machine as well as we can manually plot these charts control material is included in every batch of patient specimens or at specified intervals during the shift and the result is logged on the control chart it is advisable to use at least one control sample per batch even if the batch is small this is a diagram showing lj chart now here we can see this is a normal distribution curve that is that is a gaussian curve uh, the central line uh, on the x axis in the center we see the mean uh, left and right of the mean they, uh, they are plus and minus 1 sd uh, that is one standard deviation plus and minus two standard deviation three standard deviation and uh, so on so forward so uh, when these uh, when these values are plotted on the lj chart uh they have to lie in this range of plus or minus two standard deviations uh here we can see 68% 95% and 99% these are the confidence intervals uh, of 1 sd 2 sd and 3 sd respectively now uh how to plot on this lj chart so uh, basically if you have a batch of supposedly 10 samples uh these 10 samples you get the values of those you find out the mean of those uh, samples and then uh, once you find the mean you find out the um, standard deviation using uh, under root sigma uh, summation of x minus x bar whole square upon n minus 1 where n is the number of samples in the uh, batch uh, x is the value x bar is the mean so uh, by all these things we obtain a standard deviation uh, then 
we have uh, so we have the values of now plus minus one uh, standard deviation two standard deviation and three standard deviation respectively then these values are plotted on this chart here uh, the middle line indicates the mean and uh, the upper and the lower line indicate plus a plus minus two standard deviation how to interpret these charts any of the following techniques indicates a fault in the technique or the instrument or the reagent uh, first if the if one devia uh, deviant lies outside plus 3 standard deviation uh, then it indicates gross error or blunder if one or two uh, samples uh, lie beyond plus 2 standard deviation then they may uh, they may indicate error in the random error in the system and then they are left as such uh, third uh, third if several consecutive similar results lie on one side then they indicate a consistent bias uh, possibly uh, possibly due to calibration problem or systematic error then consecutive fluctuating values are there if if they are seen on the chart uh, rising and falling by plus or minus 2 sd then they indicate imprecision a trend of sequentially increasing or sequentially decreasing values uh, with the repeated measurements are indicative of drift these results are evaluated using westgard rules westgard rules uh, help us to diminish false rejection rate without compromising the quality also it helps to detect the type of laboratory error that is uh, whether it is a random error or a systematic error now what is a random error random error is an error which uh, which appears in an unpredictable manner uh, which is unpredictable in its magnitude in its uh, sign whether a large number of measurements or the uh, measurements of the same quantity are made under identical conditions then also the error may appear so that is called as a random error random errors are difficult to eliminate uh, it can be minimized by training supervision and adherence to standard oper operating procedures now standard operating procedures or sops uh, they they help in maintaining the quality uh, of performance by providing a stable pattern of function and avoiding unauthorized individual uh, variation they ensure consistency of work allowing uh, procedures to be better understood by the uh, by the by everyone who are working in the laboratory it is a written standard procedure that is uh, that has been approved by the head of department uh, of that particular department uh, now what the standard operating procedures include it includes the title and the document reference number contents of the procedure introduction for the procedure principle of that test specimen requirements reagent requirements uh, description of the equipment which is going to be used Uh, calibration uh, test procedure or methodology in detail uh, training requirements calculation calibration reference intervals is also maintained uh, is also mentioned in that clinical significance of the test is mentioned in the uh, uh, standard operating procedure limitation of the procedure result uh, reporting of the procedure maintenance schedule troubleshooting quality control um safety requirements and references all these things are men uh, mentioned in the standard operating procedure uh, which uh, which is done for every test that is performed in the laboratory now this is a, a second one is a systematic error it is an error that is always in one direction displacing the mean of the distribution from its original values so systematic error creates a characteristic bias that is shifts and trends in the test and results and can be accounted uh, by uh, applying a correction systematic error may be induced by factors such as variation in the incubation temperature light source deterioration change in the reagent batch modification in testing method or due to error in calibration now uh, following slides are uh, the interpretation of westgard rules it shows different westgard rules first one is the 3 sd rule westgard 1 3 sd rule you have to run, uh, reject the run if one single control measurement exceeds plus uh, plus 3 sd or minus 3 sd control limit so here we can see this uh, this value of the control is exceeding the minus 3 uh, minus 3 sd so this run is rejected secondly uh, one 2 sd rule 2 sd this is the line this yellow dotted line shows 2 sd 1 to sd rule violation means uh, one sample goes beyond plus 2 sd or minus 2 sd but uh, you do not reject this run alert it alerts to possible problems we have to just evaluate and correct the process 
to 2 sg rule if consecutive two samples go out of 2 uh, 2 sg then you have to reject the run 4 sg 4 sg rule is if one sample shows plus 2 sg goes beyond plus 2 sg and another sample goes minus uh, uh, goes beyond minus 2 sg then their difference becomes 4 sg which is a significant difference and this range uh, will exceed so this run is rejected so for one is the rule it shows that on one side of the mean if four consecutive samples go beyond one sg then uh, this run is also rejected a uh, 10x rule uh, the, uh, here 10 consecutive samples falling on one side of the mean will be rejected uh, nowadays there is modification of the uh, 10x rule which is a 8x rule uh, it is more sensitive to this it uh, it it also shows the same thing that is when eight consecutive control measurements fall on one side of the mean the run is rejected 70 rule indicates that seven consecutive samples show a uh, increasing or a decreasing trend uh, they get progressively higher or progressively lower then this run is also rejected it shows a uh, flow chart of how these westgard rules are interpreted Firstly, when control uh, sample is run, the data is obtained. We apply the one to s rule. If this rule is uh, if this rule is positive, then uh, then we see for the one three s rule, <coughs> and we label the specimen out of control. If this is not positive, then the specimen is in control. Then consecutively, we look for one to s two one three s two two s r four s one four one s and ten x. out of which if any one of the rule is positive then uh, the uh, run is rejected internal quality control also measures uh, also includes duplicate testing duplicate testing is a way of checking precision of the uh, system to start with uh, 10 consecutive uh, spe uh, specimens are run in duplicate under careful conditions we have to calculate the differences between the pair of results derive the standard deviation and subsequent duplicate measurements on any specimen of the same batch uh, of the test should not differ more than plus 2 plus or minus 2 sg this method is useful to detect random errors uh, but not it will not detect systematic error or in uh, in uh, incorrect calibra calibration it is also insensitive to gradual drift next is the correlation check now uh, this is something that we routinely do in our labs if there are uh, apparently uh, apparently high or low values are uh, obtained then these values are correlated with the clinical grounds and uh, we check whether uh, both uh, whether the system is showing false results or it is actually uh, happening a correlation check implies that any unexpected patient's result must be checked to see whether it can be explained on clinical grounds or whether it correlates with other tests delta check delta check is a formal way of detecting aberrant uh, results blood count on any patient should not differ from the counts obtained in previous 2 to 3 weeks more than a certain amount provided that the patient's clinical condition has not altered significantly so uh, if 2 weeks ago uh, hb was suppose 10 even now after 2 weeks if you calculate the hb it should not go beyond 13 14 provided he has given something Uh, some uh, medication for that now for respect, uh, the acceptable range for hb and rbc is 10% for wbc is 20 to 25% and for platelet is 50% what to do if the run is out of control we have to investigate the process correct the problem do not automatically repeat the control determine the type of error which we saw random error and systematic error inspect the testing process relate causes to the recent changes uh, check temperature of refrigerator in which controls are kept because uh, every control is temperature sensitive we can uh, there is a specified properly specified instruction given on the uh, control batch uh, so as in uh, as in how to store it check the temperature look uh, look at qc or qa records of instrument that is preventive maintenance calibration previous control runs etc verify the solution and document the corrective action uh, the second part of it is external quality assessment external quality assessment is the evaluation by an outside agency 
uh, of the performance of a number of laboratories using specially supplied samples of known but undisclosed content. EQA is a requirement for medical laboratories uh, for accreditation to ISO 15189. Now this is a body which governs the external quality assurance schemes of uh, various college, uh, various institutions. The same how it is done, the same material is sent from a national or a regional center to all the participating laboratories. Now uh, they, they run the pro process and then they uh, give back the results. Now, results which are returned to the EQA center are analyzed, target value is found out and an acceptable range around the target value is also established and the performance of individual participants is judged. If the results are out with consistors, root cause analysis is done uh, for the same and it is documented. Main function of EQAS is to ensure reliability, perform, reliable performance by individual laboratories and to achieve harmonization and concordance between the laboratories. Now these are uh, EQAS schemes available in India. That is uh, for CBC and peripheral smear, uh, we, get, uh, we get EQAS uh, controls from ISHTM that is Indian Society of Hematology and Transfusion Medicine AIMS. Then for coagulation, we get uh, it from CMC Vellore, which conducts EQAS under NABL, that is National Accreditation Board for Testing and Calibration Laboratories. For CBC and RETIC Automated, we get it from CAP, that is College of American Pathologists, and uh, Mumbai Hematology Group Interlab Comparison Program for Flow Cytometry. What is calibration? It is done to standardize the instrument for accuracy. Calibrator is, uh, a, what is a calibrator? It is a certified reference material used uh, to calibrate a measurement on analyzer. It has a target value that is provided by the manufacturer himself. Uh, this was the analytical process of, uh, analytical phase of quality control. Now we move on to the post-analytical phase, which includes reporting, sample retention, post-analysis and record retention. Uh, a good report should contain the following information. Identification of the <coughs> laboratory that has issued the, uh, issued the report. Clear unambiguous uh, identification of the examination including, uh, where, uh, including where appropriate the measurement procedure you have to in, uh, include in that. Unique identification and location of the patient, name of the clinician, date and time of the primary sample collection, date and time of the release of report, source and system that is whether it is a primary sample type we have to include in that results and examinations reported in SI units or in units that are traceable to SI units. Biological reference interval high and low both have to be uh, put wherever it is applicable. Interpretation of the results where it is appropriate and other comments such as if uh, such as the quality and adequacy of the samples which may have compromised with the results. Identification of the person author authorizing the release of results have to sign signature of the authorization and person checking the result before the report is received. This is a concept called as turnaround time. Turnaround time means it is the time from specimen collection to the uh, report when the report uh, goes back to the clinician. So this turnaround time uh, for CBC is 2 hours, for coagulation it is 4 hours, for bone marrow aspirate it is 24 hours. The laboratory uh, takes responsibility for reporting the results within the given specific time. The requester, that is the clinician, he is notified in case there is a delay for uh, the report in only in such cases where uh, the delay can compromise patient's care. Uh, sample retention in CBC 24 hours, uh, coagulation for 12 hours on room temperature, peripheral blood smear can be retained till one month on room temperature and bone marrow as, uh, smears uh, for 10 years on room temperature. Now we uh, storage of period of the examined specimen. The examined specimen shall be stored for re-examination or additional tests if you want to do on the same specimen then it has to be stored under specific conditions. Uh, compl uh, complete blood counts less than 24 hours it has to be stored on to uh, stored at 2, 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. For coagulation test less than 4 hours the plasma has to be stored below 20 degrees Celsius or 2 weeks at 40. Two months uh, or minus 70 degrees Celsius for up to seven uh, six months. For PT up to 24 hours if the uh, samples are maintained between 18 to 24 uh, degrees Celsius. And for heparin monitoring it shall be within an hour.
these are my references